the Silver Defender, hello again. Uh, ignoring guest appearances and filming special episodes like Star Wars and Breaking Bad, were there any sleepless style nights due to excitement of a story being filmed the following day? Ooh. Mm. There were episodes that spooked me and Jamie. There were episodes in which we weren't really happy until the episode was finished. Um, those were often the ones in which we were being physically asked to do stuff that was difficult. I remember Underwater Car being a story that both of us lost sleep over just because there were a lot of unknowns. And boy, I'm glad we buttoned down as many unknowns as we did because that ended up being one of the scariest episodes to film. Um, Sleepless, oh, due to excitement of a story. I mean, it's funny that you talk about that sleepless nights. I mean, so I started with sleep ends up being a really important part of my stress reduction uh, program, and it came up on Mythbusters. So I started making this show. My boys were four years old. Um, they were, you know, preschool age, and over the course of making the show. Uh, you know, we wrapped in 2015 when they were 16 years old. So yeah, I lost a lot of sleep due to kids over those years. Uh, and at a certain point, I just remember in 2010, I was like, I am way too regularly stressed and need to remove some stress from my life. And I had kind of had occasion on a vacation to notice that if I'm left to my own devices, my sleep pattern is about seven hours a night. And so ever after, I have made sure that I get seven hours a night. If I get six one night, I'll take a nap, nap the next day. I think of it like a bank account, and that has worked really well. But you didn't ask me about sleep patterns. You asked me about being excited. I think, frankly, from a day-to-day -day experience, the episode I had the most daily excitement filming was the Indiana Jones stuff. And that was mostly just because I got to dress as Indy for work every day for two whole weeks. So much fun. So much fun. My wife just thought it was hilarious. Bye, Indy, she would say as I left for work every morning. <laughs> um, Evan Copps wants to know, if I could do my climbing rig over again from the Crimes and Myth Demeanors episode, what would I do differently? And was the experience of climbing the side of the building as frightening as when your car turned turtle? No, nowhere near as frightening. So to be clear, this was me building a suction cup system uh, with feet and hands for climbing a building. Um, you can actually buy a system for doing this based off vacuum cleaners, and it works really well. I've got one upstairs in my loft. I would not have gone with a different rig for that one. Uh, I set it up in a really specific way uh, in that I wanted suction, I wanted to be able to turn on and off suction for all four of my suction cups. A smarter way to do it is to do it with two suction cups and hang your feet off of them. Um, more moving parts is more complexity, it's more points of failure. And frankly, when you are like standing with your feet in two suction cups and your hands in two suction cups, taking suction off any one of them is absolutely terrifying. But that's kind of how I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it so that all four were like sucked to the wall and then I'd be like, undo number one. Move number one up, put it back in, turn on number one, undo number two, move to, actually it started with the feet. You had to do the feet first because my feet were tethered to my hands uh, for the ability to allow me to relax on uh, the suction cups. The biggest issue we had with that story was not the rig. It was the fact that we had this, We had a crew member who was just not quite clear on the mission critical time aspect of connecting a camera to me. And this is again, early days of Mythbusters. And so the, 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 the camera on, this pre GoPros, GoPros didn't exist when we shot that episode, which means that what was on me was like a small Sony Handycam attached to a recording deck that's in a backpack on me. And the cameraman, the, the second camera, guy who was doing it just took a long time. I'm, I'm talking 15 solid minutes after I was hanging off the wall. 15 minutes of setting up the camera after I was hanging off the wall. I got a little salty, I admit, um, and told him to hurry up. Uh, <laughs> 
That was the toughest one because I wasted a lot of time and energy hanging off the wall when I could have been climbing. As it was, I made it about 30 feet or so before, because you literally had to, you, you literally, so I had, I couldn't adjust the on off suction cups of my feet. So I had to be able to control all four suction cups with just the switches on two hands. And it just meant that it would be like, hit switch one, hit switch two, hit switch three, move your foot, hit switch four, move your hand, hit switch one, hit switch two, hit switch three, move your feet, hit switch four, move your hand. It was like this whole specific choreography and I had to just repeatedly say it in order to remember it. And kind of, I did it in this complicated way because I wanted to show the classic movie, cartoon, Bugs Bunny, Wile E. Coyote way that people have used suction cups. Um, there were reasons that I would go with a less than ideal mechanical execution if it meant narratively I was answering a deeper question. Like, go, oh, could you really do it that way? Um, it, making Mythbusters was a terrific lesson in that every bit of complexity you add to a system adds to your failure points. Um, there's a reason NASA does not have cables helping astronauts close their glove hands up in space. And it, largely because the hand interface is their most important interface. And you add mechanics to it, you add failure points, and you don't want to add failure points at the most important mechanical interface the astronaut has with the world when they are out of their uh, capsule. Um, let's see if there's some more live questions coming in. No, all right. Jason Jones, when doing dangerous myths, were injuries ever considered necessary to achieve a proper outcome? Examples, bungee jumping for apples, getting dropped in bubble wrap. Two really interesting examples. No, injuries were never considered necessary unless you count me getting my tongue pierced. It's absolutely a necessary in injury. Um, injuries were never acceptable and we eliminated them as much as we could. And I don't think Jamie and I were ever harmed significantly in the execution of a myth. Uh, like our hospital visits often happened after the execution of a myth or before, but never during. Mm. What you mentioned two specific occasions, which is um, bungee jumping for apples, which is awful. Oh my God. So we were bungee jumping for apples because it was a viral video where someone jumped out of a jumped out of a gondola into a pool and grabbed an apple with their face. Now, <clears throat> we hung a gondola above a swimming pool, but very early on, we realized that targeting is maybe the most difficult aspect of this myth. Someone's coming down to bite on an apple and they have to hit that apple. They're not gonna have a lot of adjustability with their neck while they're falling towards an apple. No, you need to drop someone off a gondola, see where their face is gonna land, then you gotta put an apple there. So that's what we did. Um, the problem is, is that, um, well, the problem is that bungee jumping is awful. <laughs> I am not an adrenaline junkie, and I do not like having my adrenaline jump dumped all at once. But let me just describe the scenario of being in the gondola. So. First of all, you stand with your feet halfway over the edge at a very specific like location, so it's the same every time. The key to targeting when you're dropping something is consistency of the starting conditions. So the gondola was in the same place. We had it triangulated. It wasn't moving. And I put my feet halfway over the end, and I did not control my dropping. No, 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 no. I had the, the, our bungee jumper uh, uh, safety guy had me by the back of my shirt and leaned me out over the void the same amount each time and then let go when it was time to bungee jump for apples. This is horrific. This is awful. I did it three times and then was like, I gotta, I can't do it anymore. I literally can't do it anymore. Jamie, to his credit, did eight jumps and then said, can this be over? Which is a phrase I had never heard from him before. So it had brought him to the limits. No one was injured during that though. Um, it is, it, it turns out one of the stories we never got to on Mythbusters was accident time perception. Does time actually slow down to your brain or does your brain start to gather more information under an adrenaline rush, which is one of the theories? The answer turns out to be no. But in the study of this phenomenon, accident time perception, 
um, researchers had a very, very difficult time coming up with a stimulus for humans that would scare them at a predictable level every single time, specifically because human beings are so adaptable that we can get used to almost anything except falling. It turns out that free falling is something that nobody can get used to. You can get used to suffering through it, and I'm not saying that there aren't people who enjoy it. I will say that I'll bet their physiological reaction is roughly the same every single time, except for some real outliers. Falling is something that human beings just do not get used to, and most people, under any conditions, they just will have the same fear response every single time they are free falling. Um, I remember saying to the guy who was our bungee safety guy, wow, this third time is even worse than the second time, which was even worse than the first time. And he goes, yep, I've been doing it for 30 years and it's worse every single time. <laughs> I was like, that's not the inspirational story I was hoping for, dude. Um, but the other story you bring up was bubble wrap. Ah, oh, this was my least favorite execution of a story. No, and don't get me wrong, I wrote it still really, really rough. And the myth was, is there a certain amount of bubble wrap that could protect you from a fall? And we wrapped me in, I think, 36 inches so that I was in the middle of 72 inches of bubble wrap circling me entirely. And then they lifted me and we had done some tests to make sure I would fall flat. And then Jamie pulled the thing and I fell flat and I was fine. What I did not like about that episode was not being in control of my fall. Like I've been rolled into the middle of a six foot roll of bubble wrap and I know when I'm getting lifted and I can kind of hear Jamie going, I am starting to, <laughs> I got it, three, two, and even still I'm surprised by the release. It is no fun to not be in control of your fall. It is just no fun. That was, that was super unpleasant but I was not injured. So no, injuries were never acceptable. Uh, and I'm proud to say that they didn't happen in the execution of a, of, a, of, a, of a myth. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are of course below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.